Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the moon? Can you see the sun? Can you see the shining stars? Allah made them all. Can you see the night? Can you see the day? Can you see the clouds high? Allah made them all. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the birds flying up so high? Can you see them in the sky? Allah made them all. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Wherever I am, Allah is with me. We must believe in faith. Allah's divine faith. Whether it's good or bad, we still believe it's faith. We still believe it's faith. Everything in the universe is controlled by Allah. Everything in the universe is following Allah's faith. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome again to the stories of the prophets peace be upon them. We have detailed these stories until we reach the story of موسى عليه السلام Moses peace be upon him. And I have detailed for you this long story of موسى عليه السلام. After the death of موسى I told you how Joshua the Arabic name for him is يوشع Yosha ibn Nun. Yosha, peace be upon him, led the children of Israel and they took over Palestine. Now, only those who did not worship the calf, did not worship the statue, only those participated with Yosha. The rest have died already. That's why I told you there were 40 years of wandering so that the generation that worshipped the calf would die. Now, a new generation that was born in freedom, that was trained by the prophets, Musa and Harun alayhim as a new generation that is full of zeal for the religion and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That generation deserves victory. And that's what we need also as Muslims today. The generation that leads the Muslims today is a generation that was raised at the time when the Muslim world was occupied by the British and the French and others, they were trained by our occupiers. They, were, they, are, aff they are affected by their ways of life. They, they have been affected by the, their concepts and values. It's not a pure generation. Now, alhamdulillah, we have a new generation that is coming in the Muslim world that has been born and raised in freedom not under occupiers. We need to train them now to, to have Islam and only Islamic values in their hearts, not to be affected by other values. That needs work. When we get that, that generation full of Islamic values, ready to compete, then and only then we shall have victory. So I told you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported Joshua and stopped the movement of the earth around the sun and the sun appeared to stop in, in heaven just for him so that they would not enter into the, into the Sabbath, Saturday because they were not allowed to fight on Sabbath and he was victorious and he led the children of Israel into the city some deviated and were punished but in general now a new generation is ruling and now Palestine, not all of it, most of it is under the children of Israel's rule again. And years passed. For a while, the prophets led them. And they called them, this is the period of the prophets. 
the Prophet ﷺ tells us, Muhammad ﷺ tells us, that the children of Israel, the Israelites, were ruled by prophets. Whenever a prophet dies, another one is appointed. Whenever he dies, another one is appointed. They, they had no day without a prophet. Such people need somebody to, to guide them and train them and control them all the time. We Muslims, alhamdulillah, because we value the, the teachings of Muhammad وسلم, and we follow it, it is enough for us and that is why he is the last messenger. But as we will see, the Israelis needed prophets to control them all the time. With time, a long story, and I'm concentrating only on the major prophets, with time, the rule was transferred into the politicians' hands. So now they, there comes a period where they call it the kings. Not the prophets, but the kings. Now, during the time of the kings, there were prophets, but these prophets did not lead. From the time of David, Dawood, alayhi salam, he was a prophet and a king. And then Suleiman, he was a prophet and a king. We will see that. But for a while, that did not continue. So we are still at that period of the kings, uh, of the prophets. Later on, we will come to the period of the kings. So now we are talking about the time when the Israelis were governed by prophets. Even though that happened, there were some pockets here and there where they did not have that and they would deviate from the straight path even the deviation reached a level where they would worship somebody else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the God of Abraham as they call him in the city of Baalbek which is in Lebanon today and still exists today in that city of Baalbek appeared a tribe from the descendants of the children of Israel. And they made a statue for God and they called him Baal. And that is why it is named Baalbek. Um, it is a, a city uh, very well known today with its uh, landmarks, uh, historical marks, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a prophet his name is Elias. They refer to him as Elijah. He was the son of Al-Azar, who was the son of Al-Wizar. And he is a descendant of the great prophet and messenger of Allah, Ibrahim. Elias, or Elijah, was sent to the people of Baalbek, from the people of Baalbek. He was from that city. He was sent to the people of Baalbek to teach them not to worship anyone but Allah and not to worship a statue. He said to him, to them, and this is in the Quran, will you not fear Allah? Will you call upon Baal and forsake the best of, a, you, you, to, you call on Baal and you leave the best of the creators, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is your Lord and cherisher and the Lord and cherisher of your fathers and your grandfathers. But they rejected him. And they will certainly be called upon on the day of judgment, except those who are sincere and devote, de devoted to the uh, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Elijah, blessed the followers of Elijah. And he left a solution in, uh, he left a salute in the Quran for Elijah and the believing servants. But not much was told to us by the scholars or historians about the story of Elijah, except that he was from Baalbek and that he called his people to the oneness of Allah and that they rejected him. It is said that he abandoned them and disappeared and um, some uh, say that he died while he was calling to the truth, but um, not much we know really about Elijah. There are, though, 
some who claim that Elijah and Al Khidr, who was with the wise man with you, with Musa alayhi salam, that both of them are still alive. There is a claim that Al Khidr and Elijah Elias were, are still alive. And um, they say that there are two, four prophets who are still alive, two on earth and two in heaven. The ones who are on earth are uh, uh, in heavens are Idris and, in, and Isa. And the ones who are on earth are Elijah and Al Khidr. This is uh, something that you see in, in some historian uh, books. And that is not true. There is, there is a very clear saying by the Prophet وسلم, in Al Bukhari and Muslim and others that no one, he, once the Prophet وسلم, prayed with his companions, and then he turned to them and asked, Do you see your night? Do you know which night this is? And they said, yes. So he said, in a hundred years, there will be no one on earth alive who is still alive today. No one who is alive today will be still alive in a hundred years. The only one that will be still alive is not on earth in heavens, and that is Jesus, alayhi salam. But everyone else shall die. So there are no no, no truth to these claims that Elijah or Al Khidr are still alive. I just wanted to mention that because I've seen this in many history books. After Elias came Al Yasa, and Al Yasa is mentioned in the Quran, but again, nothing much was told uh, to us about Al Yasa except that he is the son of Uday. And he is among the descendants of the Prophet Yusuf, Joseph, alayhi salam. Um, some are on the opinion that he is from the descendants of Prophet Harun, alayhi salam. And he is also told to us that he is the cousin of Ilyas. But again, not much is told to us about the story of Ilyas, except that he was among the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for a reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his name, but did not give us details of who and what is his story. Who was he in detail, but what was his story? There are no reliable sayings of the Prophet sallallahu on that. Of course, there are many stories that came to us from the Old Testament and so on. Uh, but again, that we, we are concentrating on what the Quran says. After that, corruption started among the children of Israel and um, immorality, disbelief in Allah, worship of the statues and so on. And they started to do something that was something, a mark of the children of Israel. They started killing prophets. A prophet would come to them and teach them and they would get angry with him and they would kill him. And they killed, they killed so many prophets. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the prophets uh, in the children of Israel continued. Whenever somebody dies or killed, another one is appointed immediately. And with time, the prophets did not rule anymore, but tyrant kings controlled and ruled over the children of Israel. Of course, the kings, because still today you see the kings... Um, consult with religious leaders, religious figures, because they have a huge effect on the masses. So at that time, of course, they had even larger effect. And we're not talking about scholars, we're talking about prophets at that time. So of course, the kings would consult with them. But at the end, they would do whatever they can get, get out with. And that's what happened at that time. So with time, the, the effect of the prophets diminished to religious guidance, very limited effect on the, on the masses. And the kings ruled unjustly and oppressed their citizens. And with time, uh, the children of Israel used to this. They, uh, they are used to injustice. They are used to being ruled by the kings who uh, loved this life and they did not care about religion. As we see in many generations, not only in the children of Israel, but even among the Muslims today. So, with time, evil grew, and with time, that evil reached a level that they will kill even the prophets. 
Of course, because all of all, all of that happening, uh, the children of Israel, the Israelis, became so weak as a nation. Injustice, quarrel among them, separation between religion and state, um, all of that weakened them. And with that, they were defeated again and again in, in many battles. With time, they lost. And they lost not only land, but they also lost the Ark of Covenant. The Ark of Covenant is a, is a wooden box. In that wooden box, they, this was one of the major religious treasures they had because uh, it had the remains of the great prophets. And they, they, they valued this box to the level that uh, this is the, their most holy pos possession. And they would carry it with them in battles. In one of these battles, they lost the box. What was in the box? It, was, it had some of the remnants of the family of Musa السلام, and the fam family of Harun. Um, Allah, Allah gave uh, the tablets, the rock tablets, with the Torah written on them to Musa. It was in the ark. Uh, it, it had also the stick, the staff of Musa. Uh, some of his uh, dresses, uh, some of the dresses of Harun, السلام, the clothes of Musa and Harun. Some of the personal things that belong to Harun السلام, were also there. Um, they even say that some of the food, preserved food, that Musa and Harun uh, had was, was in, the, in the box, in, in the covenant of the ark. So in one of the major battles they had, they lost that ark. And they became so weak and oppressed. And time passed. Until one day, the leaders, the, the elderly leaders of the Israelis, gathered together. And they had a meeting with their prophet, Simon. In Arabic, we call him. Shamwail, the prophet Simon. Uh, some say his name is Ismail. Anyway, but it, it is mentioned uh, as Simon or Shamwail. And he, he started to preach them religion and call them to the right path. And you cannot have greatness again unless you go back to your religion and you abide by the law of God. So they realized that, yes, when we held to religion, we had Musa, we had Harun, we had the great prophets. Now with time we lost, as we have lost before. So the only way is to go back and have religion back in, in our lives. So they said to Samuel uh, or uh, Simon, please, we need a king that would lead us with religion. The kings that we had were tyrants away from religion. We, need, we want to go back to religion. So choose among us a king. And you guide him. He lead us to victory. And then he said to them, you have disobeyed the prophets again and again. And I'm afraid if I appoint a, a king, you would refuse my choice and you would not... Uh, listen to me, and uh, that would be even worse for you, because I would give you a very clear order. He, they said, no, believe us. If you tell us your choice, we will follow, we will, we will obey you. So he took their promises and their oaths that they would listen to him. He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the choice. The choice was Samuel. Samuel. We call him in Arabic, Talut. Inna Allah akhtara lakum Taluta malika. Talut was chosen as the king. Now they have been uh, for years and years 
between uh, between Joshua and the events that we're talking about is about 460 years. So they have been ruled by kings from a certain tribe of the Israelis. Now, Samuel, the choice is not from that tribe. So they started to be reluctant, refused. How could you choose somebody not from the descendants of kings? We expected somebody from the descendants of kings. He said, this is the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chose you, he chose him for you, and he have given him knowledge and strength. And that's what you need. Knowledge, science, and strength, power. That's what you need besides abiding with your religion. Did they obey? Did they follow? That is our story next time. The story of Samuel. And with that, we come to the story of David, Dawood, alayhi salam. So until we meet, may Allah bless you and reward you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.